And we're live here, Aviation Lowdown. Thanks for joining me. This is, uh, what is it, episode three, I believe, of season three. For those of you who are joining on YouTube, uh, I do apologize because now you're seeing my face. And for those of you who are listening on audio, you made the right choice, okay? So my parents used to say, you got a face for radio, kid. Actually, it might have been my teachers. I can't remember. My parents were generally pretty supportive. Hmm, not, not really sure. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Today is the 21st of July, which means it's been, uh, been about two weeks or so. I actually went upstate, kind of hung out up there for a little bit. I uh, did some things, uh, see some new, cool, exciting things as well. My brother actually just bought a house up there, so it was kind of fun for a few days to spend up there. Guys, I want to talk to you, right, about aviation and coronavirus, because we actually had an episode about... Uh, Maybe like three, four months ago at this point. It's kind of hard to believe, but and I was talking about how it seems to me that this is going to forever change aviation. And you know, people were like, oh, this is great because things are getting back to normal back in May, back in June, even, which at this point was like more than a month ago. It's kind of crazy. May. Whew. But anyway, they were like really convinced that things are going back to normal. And now, man, we're getting like almost 80,000 new cases a day here. Okay. Here in the United States. I'm coming to you from Long Island. And we, here we actually got hit pretty hard, right? We got pretty hit pretty hard in the beginning of this thing. And I was sitting right here in my studio in this seat, uh, freaking the fuck out, right? And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to leave my house. Uh, anyway, a few months later, now we have masks everywhere. Everyone's wearing masks. And uh, apparently people are still flying on airplanes. This is what we're going to talk about for a few minutes today. But why do people, well, I guess one way or the other, Okay, why do they try to convince each other that they should either wear masks or not wear masks, right? And it sounds kind of weird because on one hand you think, I want people to to know that I, I actually support wearing masks. I think that uh, we should, like everybody should be out wearing masks. We're going to talk about that too. But we're also going to talk about the air traffic control system, which is something that I don't think people are really even discussing. Like I actually did a Google search, Google News, okay, and there's like no mention of the ATC system, which is not surprising because who cares about the guys waving the wands? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what the air traffic controllers do, apparently. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, like this is a big deal because um, let me connect to the internet. That probably would help me get this article up. But one of the things that uh, the FAA did is they actually have a map. It's an interactive map showing which facilities had reported COVID cases. And also it, it shows basically the operational status of the facility. So we'll be talking about that as well. So the overall state of, uh, well, really the United States and aviation, masks, you know, should we wear them? Shouldn't we wear them? And why should people care? And also uh, the FAA and the air traffic control system and how coronavirus could be uh, potentially affecting that as well. So uh, right off the bat, there is a, uh, a big, huge discussion right now in aviation when it comes to whether or not people should even be flying internationally and domestically. So internationally, like a lot of countries aren't even letting a lot of people in the United States to their countries, okay, or vice versa. Now, I know overhead, I see flights all the time. Usually they fly right overhead when I'm trying to do some sort of recording, messing up my audio for all intents and purposes. But, uh, you know, people are still flying uh, domestically too. Uh, I don't necessarily know if the planes are full, but one thing that is most definitely the case is that it seems to me a lot of people on flights are wearing masks. And so here's like kind of the big discussion. Should masks be mandated? Like, should there be a law that you need to wear a mask, you know, a, a COVID-19 mask, not an oxygen mask, to be on a plane? And uh, more specifically, like, if you're flying to a certain location, okay, should you be required to have a mask on for the duration of that flight? Uh, I actually saw two articles over the past week where this is sort of the case in which people argued if you're flying to Hawaii or you're flying to Alaska or you're flying to... I mean, like Maine or even like some parts of New York because, hey, we did pretty well, guys. We kind of controlled this thing that triggered a bunch of people, I'm sure. But anyway, if you're flying to a certain location, you know, should it be required that you wear a mask so as to not spread the thing in the air? I mean, what do you guys think, right? And then how do you enforce that? There was a video or a picture of uh, Ted Cruz, right? And he was drinking coffee, didn't have a mask on. I have no idea what the story is behind this, this picture, but basically he was not wearing a mask on a plane. It, you know, the internet freaked out because that's what the internet does. And uh, it just brought up the discussion of like, hey, well, you know, he's drinking coffee, so he doesn't have a mask on. And people are like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. He never even had a mask. And then boom, you're into politics and that never ends well. All right. So masks, should they be required? Shouldn't they be required? And then how, even if they were mandated, let's say, how would that be enforced? 
No clue. No clue. Now, is this a uniquely American problem? Like, it seems to me like a lot of other countries, uh, well, I wouldn't say they have it under control, but it seems to me like they systematically are approaching this a little bit better. Maybe I'm wrong, okay? Please prove me wrong if I am. I'd love to hear your opinion. That's right, LO at aviationlowdown.com, okay? But it it just seems to me like this is a uniquely American problem. Like some of these countries, I think it was like Germany, 900 new cases over three days. Canada, it was like 300 cases in a day. You know, New Zealand, it was like 45 cases in one day. USA, it was like 78,000. Okay, it's like, holy shit, and somebody, somebody uh, hit a key too many times or something like that. And even if they did, that's still hundreds of times more, right? Or at least 10 times more or whatever. So it's insane. The numbers uh, that we have here are absolutely bonkers, right? And I can hear people now, they're like, oh, you know, we don't really know how we're accounting for the virus. I, okay, cool. Like, I'm not here to argue the uh, semantics and the approach to measuring a pandemic, but just the idea of simple mitigation strategies, like we should require masks on airplanes, which I'm fully in support of, by the way. Uh, well, that shouldn't be even be a discussion. It should just be done. Okay, and then you have to discuss the fact of, like, this virus may be, what do they call it, aerosol-based, so it spreads through the air. So, like, here I have a, this is a really nice desk, right? Uh, it's probably covered in tons of germs because I'm a filthy person. Uh, no, actually, I, I do shower every day, guys. Okay, I also use Lysol, all right? I clean this desk because it's like my baby, all right? My Argosy console, yo, Argosy. Anyway... So if I like cough and sneeze onto this thing, it's like you sanitize it, you're good. But what if it's like you cough and sneeze, you got COVID and the stuff flies into the air, into my heat returns in, well, air conditioner returns in the hallway and then propagates throughout the whole house. You know, it's a pretty big house. So more than likely somebody is going to get sick. It's going to be my cat or something like that. Cause you know, I don't really hang out with many people here cause I'm, you know, it's COVID-19. Anyway, so if this stuff gets sucked into the air, case in point in the house but what about an airplane because it doesn't matter how far apart you are it's recycled air comp you know compressed air well, i mean literally cabin compression right the uh depressurization of the uh, of the cabin results in tons of well let's say phenomena so you know that that's under pressure and the air is being recycled many people know that and it's also very dry so that stuff bounces all over the place but like no one's talking about that or now they're just starting to but masks don't really I mean, I guess they would help in some cases, but if you take it off for one second to drink coffee, like if you have the virus, now it's aerosoled into the air and, you know, sucking its way through the cabin. So total chaos. No one knows what the hell's going on. So airplanes, I just, at the risk of sounding uh, like I'm playing devil's advocate here, but like uh, they just don't seem very safe during a pandemic. I don't mean flying, like they're, they're perfectly safe to fly on. I'm just saying you might be more likely to get a virus. Seems to me that's the case. I don't know. I don't work for the CDC. Um, so with this all said, too, with the mask thing, that was in discussion to people who fly planes and if they would even enforce it. I have no idea. But also, as I mentioned in the beginning of this, too, the air traffic control system. And it's interesting. If you type in, I think it's, go to, uh, type in ATC FAA coronavirus, okay, on Google, and it's like the first or second return here. Here it is. FAA facilities affected by COVID-19, and they have a nice map. Um, now, I've been uh, working in close hand with many of the people who contribute to this map. Uh, very fine attention to detail. Like, this map is accurate. Uh, these guys obviously take this very seriously, as they should. But one of the things to note is just how many more facilities there are on this map than there were just a few weeks ago. And it seems to me like while most are operational or not really, you know, having it affect their day-to-day -day traffic operation. It's just a lot of facilities that have positive COVID tests at some point. And they actually go all the way back. Like I just clicked on Vegas Dracon. So personnel tested positive March 18th and July 3rd. Okay. And if you guys remember, that was actually the whole thing where uh, the, the tower basically shut down. This happened at a few different airports. It became untowered airports. So you know, that was the, the famous uh, Midway problem, Midway traffic, ice slip traffic, New York traffic. We made a joke, LaGuardia traffic, you know, but who knows? And how sustainable is that if the virus is just propagating and spreading further and further? I mean, if you consider the fact that like 40 or 41 states are still in the upswing of this virus, <laughs> I don't really know uh, how this is uh, sustainable. And that's not to say that, you know, the virus is, is getting 
more aggressive. It's just that the people are not not really socially distancing. Some people can't. But man, I got to sidestep the aviation stuff and just mention how crazy it is in some of these places. Like I was actually talking to a friend who lives outside Miami. Well, he's in Miami right now. And he's like, dude, you won't believe this shit, man. He sends me these Snapchats of people on the beach and people like basically shoulder to shoulder outside, no masks, you know, or my cousins in California, uh, really smart guy, really, really, uh, really big into cars. So he, you know, cruises down the Pacific coast highway and everything. Uh, and usually, you know, you're pretty social distance there. You're not really with anybody, but he does, you know, occasionally we'll see people stopped on the side of the road. He's like, man, these bars are packed. These beaches are packed. You know, the outdoor, what my, my good friend just sent me a picture of him on a nude beach. Well, it was his butt. Okay. And, and his girlfriend, whoever, whatever girl of the day it is for him out there. Ra, shout out to you, Ra. You know who you are. Anyway. So the beaches are packed, man. People are just doing their thing. They don't care. And maybe it's a cultural thing, but we're kind of freaked out here in New York. And you hear guys all the time, like, uh, I don't know who, Ben Shapiro, right? I heard him on a podcast that, that said that the reason why it stopped in New York is because everybody died. Um, okay. <laughs> kind, of, kind of silly. No, the reason why it stopped in New York was because, you know, uh, well, we, we took this shit kind of seriously. I mean, we were kind of freaked out by this whole thing. And I just don't see that that freak out mode is really, uh, really going through the entire nation. And by the way, I'm not saying you should freak out. Okay. You should not, like I said, in that one episode, you shouldn't freak out about this stuff, but you should at least use it to sharpen your situational awareness and decision-making. So go to that site, man. I invite you to go to that site. It's actually from the FAA. Some people have not seen this yet. It's uh, literally called FAA facilities affected by COVID-19. Okay. Go there, check it out. There's a lot of blue dots. That are the facilities. Uh, like, let's see. And, and Florida, you know, I have a friend. He flies for Spirit. And Spirit's based in uh, Miramar, I think, somewhere down there in Florida. And if you look at the Florida cases, like, uh, what's today's date? Today's 24. All right, so yesterday. So pretty much they're averaging about 10,000 new cases a day, give or take, right? 10 to 11,000 new cases a day. And keep in mind, when New York shut down, it was like 3,400, 3,600, something like that. Uh, we did peak around 11,500 a day. And uh, people are still flying in and out of Florida, man. So you're like, okay, we're flying out of Florida. We got 10,000 cases a day that are being reported. And we're flying to LaGuardia. We're flying to Islip. We're flying to Newark, Boston. And those are like international ports of entry. It's no wonder why, you know, these countries are like, no, 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 no. You guys aren't flying here. Okay. Now, to uh, save us from the sort of train of thought discussion going on, but at what point do we uh, do we have to say that like things get back to normal in the sense of flying? You know, uh, some people would argue it is back to normal, but pff, no way, man. People are like, oh, you know, we tanked the economy because we shut down the stuff. No, we, dude, we didn't tank the economy because we shut down stuff. The, the economy was tanked because of the uh, the uncertainties associated with the pandemic, right? So if you have a bunch of people who are afraid to fly, it doesn't matter how many regulations there are or lack thereof, you know, people aren't going to fly. And that brings up a whole new discussion of the airlines themselves and how they'll sustain this into, uh, into Q4. A bunch of airlines actually already reported that they're going to have to do a bunch of layoffs by, uh, October or the end of the year. Uh, so not to try to be all doom and gloom, but like really I mean, who, like the reality is this is like pretty bad for aviation guys. You know, I don't see anybody posting record profits here, and anything they do is only recovery that's uh, probably a little bit myopic at best, because no one knows what's going to happen in the fall. All right, no one knows. I mean, you got even Cuomo here in New York, who, you know, I actually think was was more, one of the more audacious of the governors. I think he took the reins and kind of shut the, the state down to obviously much criticism, but I think he did pretty well. But one of the things he said is like, dude, we're going to have a second wave. It's almost a guarantee. Now, how bad it is, no one knows. Dr. Fauci, second wave. How bad it is, no one really knows. Sort of like, the plane's going to crash, guys, but we still have control as to where we want to put the damn thing. You know, get it away from the city center. That's what I told somebody the other day. I'm like, you know, you can actually be really pessimistic and still do good for the overall situation. Like, we can still do a lot of good. We can still shut stuff down. We can still make sure people are following social distancing, wearing their masks. I personally think there should be a, a federal mask mandate. 
I also am fully aware as to the implications of why they can't be. Separation of, you know, uh, federal government, states. It's a big deal. It's like half the Federalist Papers are all about that shit, right? We don't want to have our government telling the states what to do. So the the states have basically been (laughs) coerced to do some stuff over the years. Uh, Like, you guys know, actually, it's kind of funny, but do you know that the drinking age is actually 18? Totally true story. So the drinking age is federally set at 18, but no state in the right mind would ever do that because if they do not make it 21, they'll lose a percentage of their highway funding. I think it's like 15 or 10%, something millions of dollars, something very significant, right? So it's like, uh, we didn't force you to do it. He's like, yeah, but if we don't do it, we're going to lose, you know, $50 billion. It's like, well, then do it. You know, and, and what's happening? Man, just the freaking opposite is happening in this case. All the testing stuff, that budget's being cut, you know, any sort of mandate or any sort of like discussion of making it a requirement is out the window. So the aviation industry is affected big time because our, our whole, you know, industry is basically based on connecting people from other areas, which is like exactly what this virus uh, is not supposed to allow to happen right now. <laughs> but I also, man, it's so weird because I also know people who are uh, like flying to, you know, EU. Guy I actually talked to a few days ago, he flew to Spain and uh, he's got dual citizenship, I believe. But uh, he lives, he's got a house there. He's got a house here. He's got houses all over, right? Way more successful than me. <laughs> anyway, it was just like a different world. I mean, the stuff that he posted versus the stuff he was posting here was so much different. And I'm not saying it was better in like in terms of his overall like life, but just in terms of how they controlled the freaking virus, it just seemed to be much more uh, in control, at least for the time being. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. And also the international airlines, let's say, if they're flying to the U.S. and then they're stopped flying to the U.S., like think they're just going to all of a sudden start flying up to the U.S. again if, number one, they know that they can get a pandemic, like spark back up, but number two, man, there's going to be no demand. There's going to be no freaking demand. Even if people aren't afraid of getting a virus, they have no money. I read somewhere that like 32% of the people for the month of July could not afford uh, rent or mortgage housing payments, essentially, here in the U.S., 32%. So a third of people cannot afford their housing. And we think that, oh, we're just going to like open up international air travel again. Dude, come on. Again, I'm not trying to be negative, but like I post on low altitude, something like a joke about masks. I try and keep it lighthearted and fun. And then people think it's like all going, going to quote end November 4th. Like I like the humor, but objectively it's, you're fucking out of your mind, dude. So it's a pandemic. Things aren't normal. Like, come on. Things are not normal. It's a pandemic. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know I'm still here, still rocking, still trying to figure out what's going on. Check out Low Approach, L-O, approach.com. That's our shirts. Uh, just sold over 10,000 stuff, 10,000 SKUs, right? Pretty big deal uh, for me, anyway. And uh, as always, keep messaging me. Low Altitude on Instagram. I love those messages. There was a virtual Oshkosh, or there is going to be one. Uh, I got invited, but I just got buried in messages. Sorry, guys. And as always, don't do anything I went to. If you want to contribute, man, LO at aviationlowdown.com. If you're not watching this on YouTube, actually, please subscribe for all you watching. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back uh, sometime next week, hopefully with a new interview for you. I had a few interviews coming up, but uh, they were canceled. He actually, one of the guys couldn't do it because his airline started a whole bunch of routes again. Ooh, well, that's good. He's flying again. He's flying again. Now, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't get the COVID. Sorry. Uh, no, I don't think, I think he already had it. I don't know. But without further ado, this has been uh, a very quick episode of Aviation Lowdown, um, talking about some of the things I'm thinking about with the coronavirus. Take this stuff seriously, man. Please wear your mask. I think they should be mandated on aircraft. Not sure they can be mandated throughout the country. And check out that map, man. Check out the FAA facilities. Fly high, guys. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. As always, take care. AviationLowdown.com. Bye-bye.